Winter's here, the snow is falling on a car As we drive for miles to that little town called home Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well. Today's video is slightly different for me and I thought I would make this because so many people have asked me what do I pack for Lapland? Now we've booked this holiday with Crystal Ski which are part of TUI and we've actually traveled with them before and had a really good experience. We're actually staying in Ruka, which is known as Lapland, but of course it's in Finland. We're flying from Gatwick and we've got a taxi booked and we've got a really early flight. So we're actually staying for a whole week and we're in one of the log cabins and these are called the Ruka Four Star Log Cabins and they are really lovely, nice and rustic and super Christmassy, so amazing. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you probably know that I actually enjoy the sunshine more than I do anything. So for me to go back somewhere, this is the first time we've ever booked a holiday and booked exactly the same thing and gone to the same place. It works for all ages, which is what is so great about it. So this time my mum and dad are coming with us and they are in their sort of 60s, 70s and they really enjoyed it. They love doing all the activities. They can't ski because they're not fit and mobile enough to be able to do that. But everything else is really accommodating for them. So that is great. My son is 14 and he's going to be going off skiing and he absolutely loves that. My husband's going to be skiing as well. And then my brother and sister-in-law are coming also with their little boy who is only three and a half. So the magic of Christmas and seeing Santa is going to be real for him. For my mum and dad that aren't skiing, they will need to buy lift passes. From memory, it was around £10 per day last time we went, but that was quite a few years ago. So whether the prices have increased, they probably have because as you know, everything has majorly increased. So let's start on some basics of things that you're gonna need if you're going to Lapland. These are probably really obvious, but I'm gonna list them. I'm trying, I will try and be quite quick because I don't want it to be too boring. So snow boots. I had these before when we went and actually the snow wasn't that deep when we went before. I'm hoping that these are gonna be high enough still, but you can get even higher ones. So my advice would probably be go for some taller ones if you're buying, you know, buying new um, but I'm gonna make use of these and take these again so snow boots are a must now you're gonna want some trousers these are called salopettes and these are a waterproof trouser and then if you can see inside here they have like a lining on the inside so this covers your boot and then this sits over top just stops any snow going up your legs basically and keeps you really dry and warm I have to say I did have a little bit of trouble finding some for me, but you can get them online and they do have short leg and long leg available in some places. So these were a good purchase. I actually got these in the sale, so I'm really pleased with these. I won't get my jacket out. You don't really need to see it. it it's a black ski jacket. But all I'm saying is a good quality ski ja jacket that's gonna keep you nice and warm is really important. Now there is a difference that I have learnt when I've been shopping for the bits and pieces for all of us. With a ski jacket, apparently they aren't quite as thick and they have more of a breathable sort of fabric to them. Because obviously when you're skiing, you are gonna get a little bit warm at times, even though it is really, really cold. If you're not gonna be skiing, then Mountain Warehouse do some great jackets that are proper thick and will take you down into sort of minus 20, minus 30 degrees and still claim that they're gonna keep you warm. Right, moving on from those outer layers, it's gonna be really important what you've got underneath. So for me, I've got some leggings, didn't spend a lot of money on them. These ones happen to be from Primark, but they have got that nice fleecy inner to them and they're gonna keep me nice and warm. So you want something like this. I'm gonna take some of my regular leggings as well, but any sort of base layers are gonna be really important because something that's close to your body is gonna keep and trap that heat in and the more layers, the better really. If you're someone that feels the cold, then you maybe want to layer up quite a lot. For my top half, I bought these fleeces, and I've got a couple of these. Um, these are actually really good. 
look, $8.99 down from $21.99. So nice and cheap for those. Sports Direct is really great for these. So this is just a nice sort of fleecy layer. I'll have something underneath that as well. Then I'll have this, then I'll have my ski jacket. I'll also take some regular sweatshirts that I normally wear at home with me. So if I do need the extra layer, then I've got it because at the moment we're looking at sort of minus 17 out there pretty cold but when we went to Lapland before we found that this was a really good tip so we've got these gloves which are like an inner so you get this glove that you wear let me get that on and show you so they're like a really thin material and then you put your actual gloves on the outside so again you've got a double layer and it doesn't really matter what you go for so I have got here some mittens and these were just from Primark actually, so these are really good. They're those um, Finsulate, I don't know if you can see that there, the, the Finsulate ones. So I've got those, and then I have also got these, which I believe were from Mountain Warehouse from when we went before. So I've got a couple of pairs of gloves, couple of options there. Now, if you really feel the cold, which I do, especially feet and hands, more my feet, I have to say, but these are brilliant. So you've got hand warmers. You can buy these off of Amazon, like in a big pack, so that if you've got a few of you going, you can just share them out. And these are brilliant because they make such a difference. And they also do toe warmers as well. And these were a godsend for me because my feet always get so, so cold. I suppose it depends on the quality of boot you buy. So maybe the more money you spend and the better insulated they are. But if not, these are great and I would highly recommend those. This is one of the sort of under layer tops that I was talking about. This one, it happens to be from Mountain Warehouse. They've That's called the Isotherm. Um, so yeah, these are really good just to have, literally wear it like, a, like you would a vest really. So you wear that as your base layer, then your fleece, if you really need it, another sweatshirt and then your coat. If you're skiing, then you wanna make sure that you've got some ski socks. And again, you can sort of double up if you can fit them into your boots. So you could wear just a normal pair of thin socks that you might use at home, plus your ski socks. Or if you're not skiing and you don't need them to sort of be sweat wicking away, is that the term? Something like that, isn't it? But yeah, it, you could just buy normal sort of thermal, really thick socks. And then once you've got everything on, you're gonna want a snood of some sort to keep your neck warm and you can like pull that up as well because you can imagine it's really, really cold. I'm telling you how cold it really is. And then um, woolly hats as well. You're gonna need a hat, something that's gonna cover your ears, keep your head really warm, that's really important. And then a balaclava, that's something else you're gonna need. They're not very expensive, like five, six pounds, something like that. We have got sort of fleecy ones like this, really great. They keep you really warm and you will need those. Things like going out on snowmobiles, husky rides, make such a difference if you've got these and of course if you're skiing as well. Ski goggles, we bought those. So I presume you can probably hire them when you get there. I don't know actually. I mean, we hired everything else, but we did buy our own. So I just think as well, you know, it's on your face, it's, you know, it's kind of nice to have your own, isn't it? A couple of other things to mention to you is we thought that the log cabin was going to be really chilly. So we took loads of really thick sweatshirts, thick pajamas, dressing gowns, slippers, snuggly socks, all of that stuff. Because we thought we're going to be really cold when we go back there. And particularly for sleeping at night, we're thinking, wow, if it's minus 17, it's going to be chilly all the time, but actually we were so wrong. So the log cabin that we booked had underfloor heating and it also had a fire. And once you got that fire lit, I'm telling you, it was hot. And obviously you're cooking, you know, you're having a few drinks, you're enjoying yourself. We found that we actually, we were too hot. <laughs> we opened the window and the door sometimes. 
So depending on where you're staying, I'm not saying that everywhere is going to be the same like that, but if you are booking the Ruka four star log cabins, then do not be concerned. They are so toasty. Because it's Christmas week, we have pre-booked a couple of restaurants so that we've got a couple of reservations already. And we know that when we get there, we can pop down to the supermarket and get what we need. There is also a wine store there as well. So any sort of alcohol that you want to get for during your stay for in the log cabin, you can go and get that. And obviously it's going to be a lot cheaper than eating and drinking out for the whole entire week. One thing I did discover though is that their Christmas day is our Christmas Eve. Does that make sense? So we're flying out on Christmas Eve and to them they are celebrating that as Christmas day which does mean that the slopes actually close early and also a lot of the shops and restaurants do close as well. So again if you are traveling and you're going to be there over that Christmas period Bear that in mind, either stock up earlier or if you're just arriving, maybe take a few bits and bobs with you. So being self-catering and also for me, I am gluten free. So if you have any intolerances at all, sometimes it's a great idea to pack a few little bits and pieces in your case. For example, I've got myself some gluten free pasta because I don't know if I'm going to be able to get hold of something like this in Finland. So I thought put it in the case, be sure that I've got something. I'm also going to be packing some little sachets of hot chocolate, Horlicks, and also um, some sachets of soup as well, because again, these are really easy, small things that can go into your case without taking up too much room or too much weight, but it's just ideal when you get there so you've got something. For the kids, whether we are going on a hot or a cold holiday then I always pack these which are the Robinson squashums they're great they taste exactly the same as they normally do at home and therefore you can just squirt a little bit in your water and they've got a nice drink and then the last few bits are because we're going to be making a Christmas dinner in our log cabin we did it before and it was really good fun it felt really festive to do it in the cabin rather than going out as I said we are going out a few of the other days but I got this Yorkshire pudding mix just again to make things a little bit easier. And I'm also packing a couple of seasonings as well to make our roast dinner extra special. If you've got this far, then well done. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it's been helpful. I do have a whole video tour of our log cabin from when we stayed last time. So if you wanna go and check out that video, then please do. I've also got a video of skiing as well in the resort. So hopefully all these things combined will really help you to make your holiday extra special in Lapland. It really is such a magical place to go. You will have the best time and if you've got any questions I'm really happy to answer those. So leave me a comment below and I'll come back to you as soon as I possibly can. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel because of course I'm going to be vlogging while I'm out in Lapland and bringing you that video. So I hope you look forward to that one and press the like button below if you think this has been helpful. Take care, have a Merry Christmas, and I hope to see you soon. Bye.